Hi, welcome to the week three of Introduction to Computer Science, the online module. Hope you're staying safe and doing well. So what we're going to be studying this week are loops in Python. So what we're primarily doing is add this tool called loops to your toolkit in Python. So what exactly the talk today is going to consist of, we just have a brief run in through that. So first we're going to ask the question, why loops? Why do we really want to study them? Uh, then what are these loops that we're going to be studying? Then how do you really write loops in Python? So we're going to run in through to the syntax of loops. And how do you really use loops? I think there's no real way to show it, but except for like running through a few live demonstrations, which we're going to do through the course of this talk. So let's begin with this question of while loops. So let's just revisit this example that we kind of have run through the whole course of Python module so far, or the course example of regular polygons. Uh, so a regular polygon is basically a closed shape now such that you have these added properties such that any two sides are of equal length here and all the angles happen to be equal. So for instance when you have a regular polygon with three sides you have like three equal sides and the angles are equal so that basically makes it to equilateral triangle with a 60 degree angle or when it's a four sides it basically happens to be a square where your angle is 90 degrees when it's five it's pentagon when it's six it's hexagon and on so these are very familiar objects and we've kind of just encountered them through the course of this lecture series uh, important interest to us when we're actually drawing regular polygons in python uh, is basically that there are two parameters we primarily take of note. Uh, the first parameter that's of interest to us is the length of each side. And the other parameter of interest to us are the angles. So what this slide we kind of look at are the angles that are of interest to us. So the angle of primarily interest to us is what we call the exterior angle because that's the angle through which a python takes a shift. So consider this angle here which is at C around so it basically turns by this angle beta and as you can see below uh, the angle beta is given by 360 degrees and you can see a brief derivation of why that is the case because there is this formula for the interior angle and then you divide it by 180 degrees and what you primarily get is your 360 by n and that's where your total is if it's sitting at c it's basically facing the line ahead and it turns by 360 by n. So now that you have these two parameters, that is basically you have your notion of length, that basically you can make your own choice of it. And then you have what exactly we know the formula for a regular n-gon. So let's just draw an example of a regular polygon using turtle. Uh, so here's an example that we see here, and that's the example of a regular pentagon. So a regular pentagon is a five-sided polygon. The exterior angle is 360 divided by five, which comes to 72 degrees. And let's just look at the code that's used here. So now to draw this code, now observe the left, right side of the screen. In this code, basically initialize it with your import total and we give a name to the total here. And then we write these five sets of commands, uh, which basically we use to draw the total. So basically we repeat these forward and left commands five times to draw the total. So here it's dot forward, dot left, and we repeat it five times. Just to make sure that we got the numbers right. <coughs> You can see here we were actually like at each of these points we have these five commands and if you look carefully so each of these brackets the commands are more or less the same so now what happens when instead of list a pentagon or a five-sided figure you want to let's say draw a 16-sided figure so here we have an example of a regular polygon with a large number of sides and this is 16-sided which is called regular uh, dexahegagon or uh, sorry hexadecagon and the number of sides here are 16 so how do you really go about drawing this Okay, so the first thing is you have to just keep repeating the same commands. You have to change the angle, but you have to kind of repeat it 16 times, which is, I guess, is a slightly painful task, right? And uh, so we can make a couple of observations here. So you want to draw any regular polygon with n sides. Uh, you basically have a repetition of n set of same sets of commands. Okay, so you're just going to be repeating these same set of commands n times, which is basically ninja.forward and ninja.left 360 by n. So what really changes when you're trying to draw a program for a different regular polygon, basically a polygon with a different number of sides, uh, is that the number of times you repeat the command is n and the angle in each polygon changes. That's 360 by n. So if you have to change the number of sides, you have to write a new program or you might just want to rewrite it and just change the number of times that you do this and change the angles. So this raises a few questions. Uh, so the first question is can we kind of use these observed patterns because there is a certain pattern that angle there is a formula for an angle 
and the number of times basically depends on the size. So can we use these absurd patterns to write a single program which can generate any regular polygon? So here we, as we notice that we have to rewrite or write a new program, but we don't want to always do that. We just want to kind of write a same program. And then can you really avoid repetition of the same set of commands? As you know, it basically involves us writing it again and again or using a copy paste command again and again, and that can become painfully boring, right? And especially when your sites go from, let's say 16 to 60, or let's say if I want to what exactly is a 600 side regular polygon, you have to do it 600 times and that can become very, very painful, right? So I just want to avoid that repetition. So let's now this kind of ties into our next question. That is, can we mechanize this process of repetition? So if you just mechanize this process of repetition, then you completely avoid repeating itself, right? And the answer to that is, you actually have an answer and that is you can use loops to do this. Uh, so what exactly are loops, but we're going to be basically encountering them. So we just briefly run it through a live demonstration of a use of loops before we really start encountering like how to exactly the loops are and start understanding, exploring their features or look at the formal definition of it. <coughs> so here we look at loops here. And when we're trying to encounter loops here, we kind of just start by looking at the code that we already used to draw your regular Figure, right? And so you have Ninja, which is the name of your total, and it moves forward 100 and left 72, and we repeat it five times. So as you can count, one, two, three, four, five. And we run it here. So as we run this here, we notice that it makes your polygon, which is your five sided polygon, or oh, it's fine. So what we do now to kind of avoid this mechanization is we kind of delete four of them, and we have this following command for i in range 0 to 5. So this range takes the values 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the value 5 is excluded. So basically it includes 0 and excludes 5 and it contains the values within these bounds. And we add an intent as you can see between where we use a for command and what exactly the statements that we're going to be repeating are. And then when we actually come back to total dot done, uh, we just go back to our usual alignment and we just forget our spacing again. So this is how we write it. And the word I, for instance, is uh, the letter I we use is not necessarily uh, basically is a part of the command. It's just a variable. You can basically write any Tom, Dick or Harry here. So we write this and we run this. And hurrah, we have the same pentagon again. So let's revisit the command that we've just written. Uh, what exactly we've done is just this, what you see on your right hand side. Okay, the numbers are slightly different, but basically the essence of it remains the same. So the command here can be broken up into for i in range 0 to 5. Range 0 to 5, as we just stated, contains the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5 is excluded, it's the upper bound. And uh, the rest of it, the body of it, what we call, can be written in terms of ninja.forward and ninja.left. And just again reinstate the fact when we actually computer scientists like to count, we kind of come from the time zero, which is why we started with the word zero. Uh, this basically explains why your range basically starts from zero and ends at five. So what exactly does this do? So when we actually take the for command, it replaces it with a counter. Now the count value of y now kind of varies over the value that you can actually find in this counter. Okay, and at each value of i, it runs this command again and again. So right now we've just initialized the value of i. Basically, i does not take any value as of yet. So as you can see on your turtle screen, you still have your empty turtle, which is not doing anything. So we just start running the program. So i first takes the value zero, and it runs ninja.forward and ninja.left once, and you can see a single line being scrolled. Now i takes the value 1, so it kind of runs it again and you can see another line being drawn. So as of yet we've kind of seen this command being run twice. One is for 0, i is equal to 0 and the other is for i is equal to 1. So we see two lines on the screen instead of 1. And again we repeat this process for i is equal to 2, 3 and 4. At 4 we notice that this comes to an end. You have your 5 pentagon that's done. It basically i has run through all the elements in the range. So this comes to an end and your pentagon is complete and your program's over as of now. So that's basically you get your five pentagon and your number of loops that it basically runs through comes to an end. So a loop in a computer program 
more formally, is an instruction that repeats until a specific condition is satisfied. And the specific condition here is that i basically takes the values from 0 to 5. And as soon as it touches the value 5 or it grows higher than that, uh, the loop basically halts and the instruction stops repeating itself. So each time the instruction is run is called an iteration. And a computer programmer, when they really want to cut the number of times you want to repeat, as we just kind of pointed out in our motivation before, uh, we kind of use loops. This is one of the primary purposes of it, that you kind of save up on the number of times you actually repeat a command. And what we kind of study here in this particular video are for loops. So there are two kinds of loops that are extensively used in Python. One of them is called the for loop, the other is called the while loop. Uh, but as of now, we're just going to focus on using for loops. So a for loop steps through each of the items in the list, tuple, string, range, or any type of objects which the language considers an iterator. So what we've done so far is basically we ran our for loop through range, and that's kind of suffices for all the purposes and all the practical purposes that we need for now. So how do we really write it? So for instance, for every item, the item is basically the variable. It can be I, it can be Tom, it can be Dick and Harry. And uh, in collection, so the collection for instance here is range, and you place your columns right after that, and then you run the statements that you're going to be looping through here. So for instance here, it, for us, it was ninja.forward and ninja.left, which were the statements, but can be any kind of statements that you want to repeat it again and again. And when the collection is a range, which is what happened in our case, the loop iterates through each element in the bound of the range, which is basically between 0 to 5. And the enclosed statements that we have, these statements that we're going to be repeating again and again, are called the body of the loop. So this is the technical vocabulary that we're going to be encountering through the course of this uh, online course and definitely through the course of this video. So how do you really write loops? So we just kind of revisit how we actually wrote our loops. So here, as you could see, we just briefly changed the way our range. It basically is no longer drawing a five-sided polygon, but a 10-sided polygon. In this, i, as we pointed out, is a variable. It need not be i, it can be j, it can be k, it can be tom, it can be anything. Uh, these are fixed commands. i for, in, and range. The values that the range can take can vary. It can from 0 to 10 or more. And uh, we kind of briefly revisit them again. And in these loop commands, you also have a few more added features that you need to take care of. One is that there's a space in the alignment between the for command line and subsequent statements, as we just used in our code before. And each of these subsequent statements are aligned in the same fashion. They're basically aligned. You have to put the same amount of spacing from the beginning of the line. And there's a colon at the very end. And we have to be really mindful of the use of the colon here. One can also use the range function that we've encountered in different ways. So the three ways in which differently we kind of illustrate here. So one is you can have a start and a stop, which is what we did, range from 0 to 5. But if let's say if I change my start from 0 instead of 0, I use the word 2. Uh, it basically creates a, the collection which consists of numbers 2, 3, and 4. And if I just specify stop, it ranges from 0 to stop minus 1. So for instance, in our command that we use, we could have just written range 5, but we started with 0 to 5 just to kind of give a brief illustration of how you can actually use it better. And then you can also write range, start, stop, and step. So it actually creates, what it does is, it creates the sequence from start to stop where the difference between consecutive numbers is given by the step. So for instance, if I just want my loop to run through odd numbers, let's say range 1, 9, and I want to find all the odd numbers between 1 and 9. So what I do is I improve my step function as 2, and then it basically increases only by 2, so it takes 1, 3, 5, 7. So the range now you can actually just iterate it over only a collection of numbers. If I increase it to 3, it gives me 1, 4, 7. So that would be what it would be between 1 and 9. 